Humans just landed a new robot on Mars. Did you see this? The landing was so intense. My heart was pounding. I was all sweaty. <sighs> and then, yes, we landed on Mars again. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. I was so lucky and got to go see InSight take off. We watched the rollback of the actual launch. It was so interesting and cool. And to see it land, I mean, it was amazing. Mars InSight is going to be a huge source of knowledge for planetary sciences and alien geology. But you know what? I'm not going to talk about that this week because it's going to be everywhere. If you want to know more about Mars and geology and space and stuff, go over to Instagram or Twitter and follow Sue Smrecker, Lindsay Elkins Tant, and Emily Calandrelli, Dr. Sarah Hurst, Ellen Stofan, and Raquel Nuno. They're all amazing, and they're way more qualified to talk about insight and planetary geology than I am. The other reason I decided not to talk about Mars this week is because it's already occupying news and video outlets across the verse. What am I gonna say that you don't already know? In the last 60 years, we've sent at least three dozen missions to our red neighbor. But what about the least explored planets in our solar system? Neptune and Uranus. We've only sent one mission to each of those, and it was the same mission, Voyager 2. It flew by them in 86 and 89, respectively. So instead of focusing on famous Mars, I have questions about our lonely, cold ice giants. Why aren't we visiting them? Welcome to Uno Dose of Trace. Before we start, please click that share button. I'm applying for grants that help support Uno Dose of Trace and subscriber growth and engagement. Show that you care about this channel and you want it to keep existing. So please, just take a second, give a click, and thank you. Our solar system has eight confirmed planets. Maybe nine if we can figure out if Planet X actually exists or not. Also, we have a handful of dwarf planets, just, you know, honorable mention. Pluto, Ceres, Haumea, Eris, and Makemake. I see you. But two of our friends in the planet category, they just don't get enough love. They're cold and lonely and far away. And they need us. We flew by Uranus and Neptune with Voyager 2 in the 80s. And when we did, we found new rings, new moons. We learned a ton of new things about our icy friends. We've observed these planets with telescopes for generations. But visiting them again could change how we see them. Think about what happened with Pluto when we sent a mission there. For example, Neptune has the fastest winds on any planet in our solar system. But that's not Neptune, that's Uranus. I just John Olivered you. This is Neptune. They're really similar. You probably never confuse Mercury and the Moon because you know more about them. But Neptune and Uranus? Exactly. Admittedly, we do know a lot about our ice giants. Their atmospheres are mainly hydrogen, helium, water, and ammonia and methane sprinkled in, depending on which planet you're talking about. They both have a lot of water in their atmospheres, more than the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn. The blue color comes from methane, but why there are different shades of blue is actually a puzzle. Scientists don't really know the exact reason, which is great. Let's learn that one. Another incredible thing, Uranus is sideways, like it fell on its face and the sun sometimes sees it from the top. Poor guy. God, it's rings and moon orbit along its equator, so it's perpendicular to the sun, which is so weird. Wouldn't you like to know more? Of course you would. Me too. Of course, both of the planets have a core, but while Neptune's is probably iron, ice, and silicates, Uranus's is water, methane, and ammonia ice, but they haven't been modeled accurately because, quote, no model we have fits all observations. Yeah, they all both have magnetic fields and even those are weird. The source of a planet's magnetic field is called the planetary dynamo. It has to do with spinning cores and all sorts of different metals. And it's actually interesting because theirs is probably closer to the surface than ours is. And it's not symmetrical to the axis like ours. It's also not dipolar. Why? I don't know, nobody knows. This is amazing, right? In the end, of course, we're just getting to this one thing. More research is fricking needed. There are plans and drafts out there talking about visiting our icy brothers. In fact, in June 2017, a 500 page report was created that lays out precisely why we should visit. We could answer what they're made of, how they're put together. We could learn more about the planetary dynamo, maybe changing our own theories on our own planetary dynamo. We could check out their rings, peep their moons, study solar atmospheric interaction. Not to mention every solar system out there, it's thought, has a snow line, or region where the planets pass there become cold and icy. Ice giant exoplanets might be one of the most common types in our galaxy, so learning about the ones in our backyard could give us tools to learn about solar systems thousands of light years away. That is incredible stuff. The best part about this report is the possible missions it lays out. 
One of which, the most expensive one, could hit both planets with flybys and probes. Each planet could teach us something unique, so to see them both would be better. But you can also learn something from their moons. Neptune's moon Triton is a captured Kuiper Belt object, while Uranus has a couple of moons that formed naturally, meaning if we could hit both planets, we could compare captured versus natural satellites, not to mention study the ice giant planets themselves. Now I know what you're thinking, how much that is? What's the paper? The report says the whole mission might only cost two and a half billion bucks. That's 1.25 billion per planet. Might sound like a lot, but President Trump wants five billion for a wall. A wall. This is the probing and flyby of two planets, plus countless moons, maybe even discovery of new moons we don't even know were there. Planetary rings, who doesn't love a good planetary ring, right? And the furthering of exoplanet science. Obviously I'm being overzealous a little bit, of course, but mostly I'm pointing out that we've sent more than 30 missions to Mars, and I love that we have. We should send more, we should send humans, but we've got these treasure troves of icy knowledge for inspiration. They're just right there and they're ripe for the taking. So let's take them. The main roadblock here is our will to fund the trip. And in part because many scientists who work on these missions won't be around to see the results. The science and planning is complicated and these missions would be long. And because the planets are far away and their orbits are decades long, as the report states, quote, now is the time to begin formulating the next mission to the ice giants. So what do you think? You in for this or what? Come on, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week on Uno Dose of Trace. So instead of focusing on famous Mars, the golden, the red, <sighs> I got all sweaty just talking about it. Mainly hydrogen, helium, and water with ammonia, methanol,